that big enough? So that's, that's, that's a sort of here the, 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 uh, uh, an example of, you know, I basically took in Merciless. list. Um, I, I created a module called, uh, I basically executed my module, assigned it model values, and then in, in the HTML, I'm just going to call the model and show it, uh, and, you know, spit it out. In case of an actual partial model service, where I'm calling a RESTful backend, um, I create what is called a factory. So a factory, there's a difference between HTTP, dollar HTTP, and any, uh, um, uh, uh, any resource in a factory. A factory is basically something that you're going to use all the time. That's your factory where, where you're going to have your majority of your current operations, that's the factory. Um, you're going to do get, you're going to post, um, you're going to abstract some kind of some more information. HTTP is sort of something where it's, it's similar to, um, HTTP is, I would say it's similar to like uh, using uh, .ajax uh, in jQuery, where you do an ajax call and then you're done. Uh, factory is something that you are downloading a chunk of data and doing a bunch of operations with it, back and forth, so you sort of keep a keep connection open, and uh, you do what you got to do. Um, Okay, so basically, um, I'm creating a, what is known as a parcel model. Um, and I'm, that, so this is a dependency. And I'm basically saying, okay, it's, uh, there's going to be a resource. Um, it's it's going to return a resource from, um, and that's the, that's the backend. And that's the, uh, that's the RESTful backend. In this case, again, I'm calling, I'm saying, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, spe I'm specifying an ID. But if, if, uh, if I don't, Specify <coughs> all I'm saying is just give me everything. If I don't specify it, give me, you know, give me A to Z. If I'm not specifying B or C or F or anything like that, just give me the whole thing. Give me the whole chunk. So I, uh, I apply a get method. Um, in order to, uh, if I want to save something to it, I would use the put method, or if I want to create something, <coughs> the post method. So I'm defining all the things right there. That's, that's what a factory does. So it's just going to hit that dependency right here. With, 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 uh, with whatever method I wanted to and <coughs> Okay, so that's the parcel model. Um, now let's go to the controllers. So remember we said, okay, we are going to um, use, if we, if we hit parcel uh, report style HTML, we're going to we're going to um, we're going to hit the part of uh, we're going to hit the reports uh, uh, reports controller um, and so ignore the code on the top because that was me basically being stupid and debugging um, stuff. But the bottom from line ten to line fourteen that's the main that's the main. Um, okay, so in this case, uh, you know, again it's a PPS app um, uh, uh, by my app and then. Uh, I'm defining the control over here, and then well, when I say dependency injection, this is where I'm declaring my dependency, injecting my dependency over here. So, the HTTP uh, location is what you get in the URL bar. Um, that's sort of, um, I don't know what it is at Backbone or um, jQuery. No, no idea. But it's not a location in Angular. And then I'm, I'm also injecting my personal model, the factory that I created, that, that I just showed you. That's what I'm injecting over here as well. So what the dependency injection is going to do is basically going to call um, stuff from the factory that I need. Uh, how many people know and understand dependency injection? So dependency injection is basically you're, you're creating certain functions in a different location. And 
the way I taught myself was, and I'm, I'm, I may be wrong, but it sort of works for me, is basically, it's sort of like how you do, how would you do like class inheritance and, and like C++, because that's why I learned in high school. So I remember doing that, you know, you have your private class and your public class, and then you can inherit your <coughs> class and your public classes or into other private classes. So sort of that was, that, that's how you would like do sort of some sort of like dependency addition. And I'm like, I think, I mean, you're, you're close, but I think a better way to describe it, so with dependency injection, um, you, have, you have your classic, I mean, you use dependency injection all the time. That's where you give a class its dependencies. So Angular here has a custom resolver that is kind of a step beyond that. It's, a, it's kind of a container. So what, you, what, what Angular does in this scenario is it asks the container for its dependencies, and it's, it's kind of a, um, it's slightly implicit on how it works. But it asks the container for its dependencies, and you've defined what each object is in that container. So when it asks the container for that object, it gives back what you defined it as. And there is some named constructs and some more, uh, um, kind of like you've named reports controller. Um, is that the name of the controller in this case, or is yeah, that? No, that's the name of the controller. So there's um, a higher um, declarative structure that I'm not familiar with the name of because I'm not as deeply familiar with Angular. But it's a really nice way of saying this is the name of an object and it should be an action that it returns. And when you ask for that by name, your resolver will automatically give you the result of that. It can be in some scenarios, I think they could call it an action or there's an object that will return as well. I've not used it tremendously because I don't use Angular very much, but I'm familiar enough with that bit. So it, it, if, you're using, if you're familiar with more static languages like C Sharp or Java, there's classes like Ninject or uh, Spring for Java, things like that that allow you to wire up all of your classes and resolve dependencies in a more dynamic fashion. Hope yeah. that was... So let me ask another question. So is Angular actually doing some like introspection here? It's actually looking at the function that's being declared there and saying, look at it. Well, there's a, a screen that says parcel model. I'll go and see if I can find a uh, file by that name and load it in. Oh, uh, well, not a file, but, but, uh, but uh, dependents are an object. So yeah, for an object. So it does not find that. Um, let's go with okay. the there is a convention, though, I think, when it's looking. It, it, you notice there is a difference between dollar sign, all those, those services that had a dollar sign. Yeah. And there's, a, there's like a convention where, you know, all things being equal is going to use the built-ins. And, and I don't recall exactly. I think well, the parcel sorry, model it, it, is not even going to go there. It's like, I don't know what the hell this is. So. No, part of it will go for it. I mean, it's not a built-in. That's what I'm saying. It, yeah, it's not a built-in, because built-ins will normally have that in G namespace sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And if I start switching up the orders of those, uh, those objects being passed in. That, that's what I was getting to. Oh. So over uh, here, right here. So if you notice, uh, if, if this is, so one of the good practices, uh, one of, uh, uh, that, that people, uh, and your uh, makers and experts suggest is that you load all your scripts after you have loaded the DOM so that you are not waiting for all your scripts to get resolved before you, you know, if we're not going to it so the user is not just sitting over there waiting for something to happen, versus, you know, your DOM gets loaded, and then your JavaScript gets loaded and then starts doing stuff. Anyway, so, um, in this case, after a DBU, I basically play a little more and your files that I needed, and then those are my build scripts, and they are in a certain order. I have the app.js, my routes are the first thing, then goes my personal list where I have you know, and the, the, where, where my controllers are, then my model, and then, then my parcel details. So, so that, that, that's how you would, you, you would have to um, import it in a certain order for that to work. Okay, so we'll go back to, where was I? Uh, controllers, yes, uh, reports. Okay. okay, so I'm going to, uh, I basically have my model right here, it's called that premium list, uh, parcel model, not query. So I'm basically using parcel model dependency and I'm going to query that. 
to get my score map in the OS. And I have a debugger over here, uh, just basically about spit it out in console.log. Let's see. Not the, not the home page, obviously, but um, there's uh, 
Actually, if you have an account with DoubleClick, their whole internal application has been written in Angular, and that was like DoubleClick was like one of the first products that um, people at Google actually decided to use Angular, and they have been pretty good with it. Um, not this version. Um, but just to give you an example of how sometimes, um, if you notice this 95 right here, I'm going to reload this page and watch what happens with 95. You see the question mark? For a millisecond, did you see the question mark? Okay, that question mark is basically a placeholder. When we were, when I said that one of the, one of the good things to do with them when you're you know, using Angular is that you load the DOM first and then you load your JavaScript um, assets, that question mark is sort of like a placeholder over there. Uh, before it used to be a blank. And they put in a question mark just to show you the difference, you know, like how long does it take. It takes like, it's just basically a millisecond. So you can, if you design your application, if you want to be, like, if you're really concerned about that, you can do, you know, you can do something with that and sort of put something inside over there that changes after Android gets loaded. So but that's, that's, the, that's the delay that you have right there. I don't know how big of a delay is that, but I guess you can do a little bit that. Oh, uh, one thing I totally forgot about is um, better rank. So, better rank, right there. Um, enable. Okay, so better rank basically is uh, much better than the projector. Um, so, it's basically showing you your um, scopes in this case. And then every time I click on a scope, I wish I could just like, okay. Let's try this. Let's talk about that. Okay. At least that helps. Probably. Alright. Let's refresh this. Okay. Mm -hmm. this better. This is one cool feature where you can actually, every time you highlight or look at the scope over here, it, I wish I had a better resolution of it, not have an 800 bus. You see on the top right over there it says 800 by 253. That's my resolution right now. So the, the whole thing's like I can't even like show you all the features of the battery right now. It's sort of annoying. Um, well, yeah, so it's it's watching all your uh, data mining elements um, in this case and then you can I think you can toggle them on and off. Uh, well, you can talk about them in the watch below. And then we have your service dependencies, which is going to show up. Oh, right there. There you go. There's a sweet diagram. Okay. So those are your dependencies. Your dollar resources, depending on the parcel model, is very dependent on the HTTP and also the dollar parse. Huh. So matter of fact, shows kind of shows you that dependency within like how certain resources depend on other resources what you're actually doing with the DI, with the uh, dependency injection, when you're doing dependency injection. Um, show applications, bindings, oh yeah, show bindings, that's, I think that's what it is. There you go. There you go. Okay, so, um, now if I click on something, but, no, okay, no, but it should have shown me the, Bindings. Yeah, I think it just all that stuff. Okay. So. All right. What about scopes? There's the scope. Okay. So we have the binding. That's the overall scope. So if you go back to models, that's the whole scope. Within that scope, no. Come on. Yeah, that might be the scope. Yeah, but uh, I'll be honest with you. This I don't quite understand how this inspector works. I haven't used it a lot because it's. It's relatively recently that they've added it to Batarang, like maybe a few months ago. Yeah, but this resolution is kind of throwing me out. Okay, so let's go up the models. What about this one? In there. The item. Oh, that's the parcel we have. But it's kind of cool that you Yeah, you but the, the good thing is, the uh, one thing that I like is the uh, dependency where you can actually see the service dependencies for, for that particular you can see what's going on, what's going to be well. Okay, so that's that, and then one last thing is, I'm going to post these links online. Um, basically, a bunch of articles that I've talked about, starting from 
Tesla announcement to um, the mean stack to, you know, uh, what is MVC and what is MV Smart and all of that. Um, and then there's this really good video called the Angular JS in 68 minutes. If you have an hour to tell, uh, you know, I guess unless you watch it. Huh? Okay. Not again, uh, it's, a, it's a different video on YouTube, it's so pretty cool, yeah. And then, uh, again, that I know is good as well. Uh, it's a great resource. Um, of course, the uh, first ever Angular conference that happened uh, earlier this month, a couple weeks ago, uh, check that out. And uh, uh, also, the to do MVC website, if you want to compare uh, different uh, JavaScript frameworks and you want to see how things work, uh, the most basic thing, as always, people suggest is to create a new application. Uh, check out Purdue MVC, um, and that's uh, it for me. If you have any questions, um, we're at overtime. Yes, sir. Uh, forgive this question if it's if it's naive, but you both said that at one point or another that <clears throat> the model view view model mechanism or or, or organization aids with security, helps security, helps make it more secure. How, how does that work? Well, because you're not exposing your whole model to a certain view. If that view gets infected, that's not sort of you know, messing up your whole model. It's but it's also, it's also sending the changes to the model back to the, or say changes to the view back to the model, right? It wasn't that one of the things that we were talking about before? In, in, your, in your talk? That's the, no, that's the controller's work. Okay. That's the work of the controller. Controller updates the model, the view just watches. So, model. Yeah. And in this case, when you say view model, it's that. One of the links over there that I posted, the smashingmagazine.com link, it's called a, there's a pretty good article from this guy. Um, He's a front-end developer, his name is Andy Osmani, and uh, he talks about it's called Journey Through JavaScript MVC Jungle. Um, it's a very cool article that talks about how like, things can sometimes in multiple controller things can make it confusing, but I try to go by it as much as I can, and but there are certain parts that, like, but yeah, at the end of the day, you know, the controller is updating the model, and then your um, view is observing it and changing its all accordingly. That guy, I don't know how to spell his name. He, uh, yeah. he's That's got some like huge title now. This guy's brilliant. I mean, he's a very clear writer, and he makes these concepts. He's worked on like uh, what AOL or something. He's worked on these really large applications. Uh, and he has money, and, and uh, he's got great videos. He's he wrote a book on how to organize, how to architecture uh, large JavaScript applications. So yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's a pretty good article on uh, Smash and Hanson. Uh, take a look at it. Yeah. And this guy, um, this is John Lindquist, who actually spoke mm -hmm. in Code Nash last year.